Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome back to another edition of Meet the Opposition. This week I'm joined by good old John Palmer, the man who covers all things Chowton and Town ahead of the clash at Portman Road this Tuesday night. John, thanks for joining me first of all. Uh, just the 10 goals in the last game for Chowton, 5-5 <laughs> draw against Wickham Wanderers. Um, first of all, I just want the lowdown on that. What, what happened? <laughs> what went on? We could probably spend about an hour on this game, but I mean... We, we went there joking that the last two times Cheltenham have been there finished three all. So we were joking that, you know, there's no way it's going to live up to those two games. In the end, it turned out to be even more mad than those two games. But it, it was an incredible game right from the start. May scored after three minutes. Then it all went wrong. Suddenly Wickham was 3-1 up, looking like they were going to cruise it. 3-1 at half time. The, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was uh, particularly stormy, but there was a bit of a breeze. Cheltenham definitely had that in their favour in the second half. Got it back to three all. You know, after digging so deep to get it back to three all, then Sam Vokes scores two in two minutes for Wickham. And I think that was the moment where most of the Cheltenham fans would have thought, you know, it's not our day. But then May had other ideas and, you know, it was, it was his day really to score four and to finish five all. It, it felt like a win in the end. And it was it was incredible to watch. Awful defending from both teams. Both managers will be, you know, very unhappy with the way their teams defended. But it was just, it was great entertainment. And it was anyone who was there will not forget that game in a hurry. Definitely not. I don't know that was the big talking point on the weekend in League One, just seeing 5-5. Five, five. We read this wrong. <laughs> but yeah, as you said, it's good good striking from the, the strikers, but also bad defending from the defenders. Um, let's quickly just mention Alfie May right now, because he'll be the man on a lot of people's lips, scoring four goals, breaking history there. Um, he is going to be the key man. Let's go and get the last 11, what was on Saturday. Um, mention him a little bit, but also any other players you think we should look out for this, this Tuesday night? Yeah, he's, he's really standing out at the moment. He he came in in January 2020 from Doncaster and he's, he's always looked lively. He's always been pretty popular with the fans. But last, i say last few months, he's really emerged as sort of the season's outstanding player and he's got himself fitter. Um, he's become more professional. He's, he's sort of grown up a bit. He's 28 now. I think he's taken on a bit of a leadership role within the squad. Got himself a new long-term contract in January when there was a bit of interest from America. Um, which was a weird one because they they uh, team San Diego Loyal signed Carver Sell from Cheltenham. Hmm. I think while they were scouting Carver Sell, they noticed May and had a little bit of interest in bringing him over. But he signed his new two and a half year contract, and he's yeah he's just at the moment full of confidence as you'd expect. Eight goals in the last four. He's already broken the record for Cheltenham's um, League One total, which was previously fourteen for Stephen Gillespie. So he's on fifteen already with fourteen games to go. So he's Highly likely to score a few more. And his next target really is the club all-time EFL record, which is 39, and he's on 30 already. So he's he's just a man who's, like on Saturday, every time he got the ball, he looked like he was going to put it in the net. He's just, he's trying things that, you know, some players wouldn't even try and he's managing to pull them off. So I think I think Keanu Tete deserves a mention up front with him on loan from Tottenham. He got his first goal on Saturday, the only player to score for Cheltenham other than May. And he's, he's been a good foil for May. He's set a few up for him. He's a big lad, six foot four, pretty mobile. I wouldn't say he's been brilliant in the air, but he's he links up well with May, and he's he's got a good he's got a good acceleration, powerful lad. So those two up front have been a real success story. I think looking through the rest of the team, Callum Wright scored the opening the equaliser against Ipswich at home. He's been very good on loan from Ipswich uh, from from Leicester rather, and I can't see too many changes on Tuesday night. I think there's a, there's a chance that Michael Duff might recall Scott Flinders in goal, who's Vastly experienced 35-year-old goalkeeper who, who's since Cheltenham played Ipswich, he's he's come into the team, had a good run of games, and Evans came back in after a poor run of form in December. But I think there's a chance after Saturday's five goals going in that he might bring Flinders back in. He's a little bit more of a steady pair of hands, but Evans is definitely more one for the future. So that'll be an interesting one. And also, I think there's a chance Liam Serkham could come into midfield, just have a little bit more steel with Ramsey and Wright, very technical, very creative, attack-minded players having conceded five on Saturday and with the sort of form it switched in, I can see there's a chance Circum, um vastly experienced midfielder could come in midfield, but be very much similar to that 3-5-2. Back three will be the same. And um, I think Sean Long is back fit, um, likely to be on the bench. But other than that, pretty much the same. OK, and um, there's one man who's not on that 11 because he left shortly after his long throws beat town in that 2-1 win at Cheltenham. Um, but since then, you know, 15th in League One, probably a good season overall for Michael Duff, you know, Cheltenham back in League One since the 2008-09 season. Um, are Cheltenham fans happy with this season so far? And um, what can we expect from this game? 
Yeah, I think looking back, the the two one win over Ipswich felt like the night where Cheltenham sort of arrived in League One. They they drawn one, drawn at Crewe and and lost to home to Wickham before that. That that night gave everyone a big lift and they they started pretty well, particularly at home. And everyone had high hopes of sort of staying clear of the relegation zone. They had a bit of a wobble in December, um, including that five nil thumping at home by Cambridge, which sort of came a bit out of the blue. But since since the turn of the year, they've been pretty good. They've drawn probably more than they'd like, but they've good point against Wigan at home, beat Sunderland at home, which was you know great result up there with the Ipswich result, and also beat Fleetwood recently. Followed that with the five or draw at Wickham. So I think they they've put just enough dif- distance now to sort of feel confident they can stay out of it. And exactly like you said, Ross, is staying up would be a good achievement. Seventeenth, the club's highest ever finish. If they can get you know even one or two places above that this season, it'll be another little bit of history. But it's been good. It's been it's been a really creditable season so far. And losing people like Toza, lost a couple of other players in January as well. Chris Hussey decided he wanted to go to Port Vale. Um, Carl Vassell went to America. Dan Crowley left. So there's been a bit of a turnaround. But they've still, or if anything, they've improved. A lot of, a lot of players came in in January, eight, eight or nine new signings. And I think there's a bit of a worry that they might take a while to settle in. You know, something almost similar to what Ipswich were going through at the start of the season. Big turnaround in a short space of time. But recent games, they've shown enough to suggest that they can, you know, not have to worry too much about the bottom four, I think. Yeah, and um, I was just looking at the results, you know, you always look about form. And Cheltenham are in decent form, only one defeat in the last nine games. But there's a lot of draws in there, as you mentioned. You know, there's um start of the year, back-to-back or three 1-1 draws. And there's been two twos, a 5-5, the nil nil. But then there was a good result against Sunderland, although Sunderland are just uh, a weird team at the moment. They're just losing against teams like Doncaster. It's been a weird campaign. But um, heading to Portland Road, first time we were chatting off-air, this will be the first probably competitive, you know, fixture between the side. You know, they both played in the Southern Leagues back in the 30s. I'm sure there's not many people around who watched that game. Um, but I'm sure Townsend fans are looking forward to, to travelling to Portland Road. Um, what are you expecting from this game? Of course, Town, great form at the moment. Unbeaten at home, under McKenna, four clean sheets in a row. It's going to be a tough game, but what are you thinking? Yeah, I think the... Cheltenham have been to Rotherham recently and, and lost 1-0 to a bit of a, a controversial goal where they really felt Will Boyle was fouled in the build-up. So that, that that gives Cheltenham a bit of encouragement that they can go and sort of dig it out against one of the better teams in the division. Obviously going to Wickham, a bit of a freak game, and Wickham on in great form. But now they go to a team that are starting to, I would say, live up to the, you know, the pre-season expectations. I think when Cheltenham definitely caught Sunderland at a good time a couple of weeks ago, and I think they also caught Ipswich at quite a good time in August, but I think now they'll they'll know this is going to be a proper test against a team thriving under a new manager. Really got everything to play for in terms of trying to get into those playoff places. But definitely a night to look forward to for Cheltenham fans. It is a bit of a shame that once again it's a Tuesday because uh, I think that will rule out a few of the the hardcore that you know would normally go on a Saturday. But I'm certainly looking forward to a new ground. Never been to Ipswich before, never been to the ground before, and it's going to be another one of those famous old grounds that Chet. Even though Cheltenham have got to sort of turn up and and play what's in front of them, it will be another one of those grounds where they think, you know, this is why we wanted to get promoted to League One, to come to a place like Portman Road, Stadium of Light, you know, all those great grounds that, that you know, with respect, some of the grounds lead to aren't quite in the same league as Portman Road. So it'll be a good occasion to look forward to. But Michael Duff, as always, he's very good at making the players focus on the playing against the 11 players rather than playing against a team that have won European competitions and league titles and relatively recently. So, yeah, re- really looking forward to the occasion as well. Definitely. And um, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, mate. And the last sort of thing to mention is, can Cheltenham do the double? Town fans, I hate to hear that, but what's your prediction? What, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think they'll come in with a lot of confidence, especially May, but the team will take a lot of confidence for the way they came back against Wickham. Also take a bit of confidence the fact they've already beaten Ipswich once this season, but they have found away wins particularly difficult to come by. Um, they've won at Charlton, which was good, but Charlton were in a bad time, a bad place at the time. And they've won at Gillingham, who were on their knees under Steve Evans at the time. So I think, I, I, I don't want to be negative. I think the best Cheltenham can hope for is a point. That would be an excellent result to get a point at Wickham and then a point at Ipswich. But Ipswich being in the form they are, I think Cheltenham are going to have to defend a lot better. No matter what sort of form May's in, they're going to have to defend a lot better than they did on Saturday if they're going to get anything from the game. I'm not going to back Cheltenham to win the game, but I think they could sneak away with a, with a point, which would be you know very respectable. 
Indeed. Well, John, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I'm sorry to all the viewers if I've been very white. Casper the ghost in this video. It's, um, my lighting's a shambles. Um, but, John, thanks for joining me. Um, make sure to follow the game with us and also John um, with his paper as well. And uh, we shall see what happens at Portman Road on Tuesday night. Enjoy the game and we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye for now.